Hello everyone, my name is Rahul Donde. I'm counsel at Levy Kaufman Collar, an international arbitration boutique. I work as arbitrator, counsel, and tribunal secretary in international arbitration cases, both international commercial arbitration as well as international investment arbitration. I have a specialization in international dispute settlement, but more specifically in um, energy disputes, uh, both oil and gas as well as renewable energy. I also have a uh, vast experience in practicing in uh, legal disputes in, in commercial laws in both civil law and common law jurisdictions. Thank you very much to Harold for inviting me here today for uh, making this uh, presentation. Um, I think it's an excellent initiative that Harold and the BIAMC have thought of. Um, you know, these video lectures to give advice uh, to aspiring um, young professionals. I, I only wish that uh, this was something that was available to me uh, when I was where you are at your stage in the career in your career so well done to harold and well done to the bimc uh, when harold invited me to make this presentation uh, a number of thoughts really came into my mind there are so many pieces of advice that can be given to a young professional and you know there's so many aspects and so many different avenues that one has to think of and you know when you're getting into a legal career but uh, what, I, what I would like to share with you today is one piece of legal advice that I received uh, very early on in my own career and is something that I try to apply almost every day really in my own career as it is um, today. And that one piece of advice is actually quite simple, it's quite intuitive, it's nothing um, unique, it's nothing um, you know th that you'd be surprised hearing, but at the same time I find is very underappreciated and the importance of it is really not well understood and and that advice is be relevant stay relevant now for those of you that have some knowledge of uh, management uh, skills and management training you won't really be surprised to hear the words be relevant um, it's something that has been it, that's not really new to the management side of things but I do think that it is something that is underappreciated as far as the legal fraternity and the legal field is concerned. And, and I think it is something that is quite important and that, as I said, it's something that I apply in my career now and that I have seen others apply and other successful lawyers apply as well. So what exactly do I mean by when I say be relevant? And, and as most of you can imagine, it does, it, it, it's something that's fairly intuitive. You understand what being relevant is. It's something that it's, you know, it's being in the moment. It's, it's understanding what the uh, person speaking to you or, or what is expected of you in a, in a particular situation, what it is and, and acting appropriately, responding to really the need uh, at the time, responding to the situation. But from my own perspective, I like to think of being relevant as, consi as consisting of three components. Um, the first is understanding, the second is asking, and the third is being aware. So when you think of being relevant, I think the first real aspect that you have to think about and that you have to take into con consideration is understanding. You really need to be able to understand what exactly is expected of you at any given point in time. What exactly is it that your co-workers are looking for when they ask you to help them with something? What exactly is your supervisor um, asking you to do when he asks you to do a particular task, he or she? What exactly is the role that you have to play in a particular organization and whatever that organization may be? You need to really understand what your place is and you need to be able to deliver once you have that understanding, you won't be able to deliver unless you really are able to understand what, the, uh, what is expected of you. So the first important thing, understand. The second is ask. And this is something that I find that is not really aggressively pursued um, in, in organizations. And that's simply asking. If you are unable to understand what exactly your uh, precise role is, or you're not sure what exactly is expected of you, uh, you should feel free to ask. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Ask. And, and many people and many people that I work with as well much prefer um, being asked a number of questions at the beginning of a task rather than at the end of it or during it when, you know, a lot of time has elapsed. Some of you may work at law firms. Some of you may work in other organizations. 
uh, you'll find that you know the legal field and the legal work that you do is very often uh, under some severe time pressure and if you are unable to understand or unable to fully comprehend what your task is and you're too shy to ask then that just leads to a stressful situation where what you've worked on for a period of time for a considerable period of time potentially is not really what is expected of you and that could lead to some tension so don't feel afraid don't feel shy to ask if you have a doubt if you're not sure ask and again the asking doesn't only have to be reserved to the beginning right it could also be during uh, a particular uh, task while you're working with colleagues etc if you're confused about something if you know you're researching on something and your research takes you to an area which is somehow different from the area that um you were thinking of when when you got into it you should feel free to ask even during a task you know do i inquire into that should i look into that now do i not do i simply turn back to what the original um kind of role was don't feel afraid don't feel shy to ask and the third part of being relevant is is awareness you need to really be aware of yourself you need to know what your strengths are what your weaknesses are and work towards those i mean if you have a career if you if you've studied international investment law for instance um you know it would be easier for you uh, to be aware of the developments in international um investment law it would come more naturally to you as opposed to if you have a career and your strengths are in international commercial arbitration then it would be easier for you to kind of look into international commercial arbitration and give advice and and respond to um queries that your coworkers colleagues etc have in the international uh, commercial arbitration side of things so you need to be aware of what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are because that most definitely helps you be relevant and you also tied to that very closely tied to that is you need to be aware of your industry you know what is your stock, what is the area that you are um, interested in what is the area that you call your own what is the area that you can see yourself building your career in and you need to be aware of your industry and with increased awareness you know you are able to be more relevant you are able to be more on point in terms of the roles that you have to perform and and the last part really of being aware is that you need to be you need to have a good sense of the bigger picture you need to have some sort of an understanding as to why a particular question is being asked or why your uh, your uh, is being asked of you or why you know you're fulfilling or being asked to fill a particular role um you you need to understand what the bigger picture is and only once you understand what that bigger picture is will you be able to more efficiently fulfill um your role so it's a, it's a simple concept really it's a, it's the simple concept of being relevant you need to understand you need to ask if you don't understand and you need to be aware what once you are relevant or once you um have, have reached that stage and it, this is something that you need to do almost on a daily basis it's it's equally important for you to stay relevant um and and this is important not only for those um you know that have just started off with a career in a law firm in an uh, in an academic institution or otherwise but also for those that that are thinking of starting off their own with their own business um and 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 you know uh, looking at various opportunities you need to always stay relevant don't get into that kind of comfort zone where you are comfortable with your colleagues your coworkers um your supervising partners other professionals um and you kind of lose sight of the fact that you need to continuously be relevant you have to stay relevant and and that really involves in my mind at least two aspects and and the first is learning and the second is anticipating now what i mean by learning is you know it's an old kind of old saying that goes if you don't learn you don't earn and i think there's a healthy amount of truth to that you need to be have a mindset where you're learning every day every day you learn something new you keep your eyes open your ears open you're you're listening to the noise that's happening around you concerning uh, your field your industry your colleagues your coworkers your your organization your institution um every day you're learning something new and that's that's at some level helping you process uh more than helping you respond to whatever the needs of that organization coworkers you know supervisors etc are you're more able to deliver um a a work product that is sensitive to all of the um 
you know occurrences that are happening in the world around you you're you're learning continuously and that that's very important to to staying relevant you need to be continuously learning and you need to have a mindset that you know there's something new every day and everything that i'm learning will in some level at some point um help help me and and the second part is is anticipating uh, and i think that this is something which is kind of not really well understood or well appreciated um at the, at the more junior levels but is very well appreciated if you're at the more senior level right um if if you know that you're working with a team of of uh, you know less senior practitioners but uh, they are very well aware of the of the developments and they're well aware of your needs it's 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 um something that endears you to them um and kind of cements their role in your own team in your own organization and that's something that at least i appreciate um quite a lot when i'm working um with with the less experienced practitioners um is the fact that they can anticipate uh and and to give you a very simple example you know with the, with the with the covid-19 uh, pandemic there was this whole movement that happened from in person to online and that happened both for um hearings in international arbitration but not only it also happened for conferences and other things um and and if i were a younger lawyer at that time what i would really do is i would you know read all of the information that was out there and you know that was being published by arbitral institutions and and authors and and several other bodies uh, about online hearings about virtual hearings uh, virtual meetings how to conduct them etc and then offer my services to uh, offer that level offer that expertise to uh, the most senior practitioners um or generally to, to uh, you know to to uh, to other individuals in the in the fraternity to say hey you know if you have an online hearing i can help you out i have this experience i've read this particular piece of you know scholarship on this issue and i'm 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 confident enough that i can help you and again i think that's something that that uh, as you go up um, as you become more senior you really appreciate because you know that there is someone um that they has a good grasp of a recent development um and is able to kind of assist you uh, come to terms with that development so another important aspect or a very important aspect i think uh, and that will help you really stay relevant is is anticipating anticipate you know what the market the industry is likely where it's likely to move and and get there first uh, and make sure that you know the people that you're working with your peers know that you're already there and that you have the knowledge that they may um be looking for so two really simple kind of tips uh but that i've personally found very very useful um be relevant understand ask be aware uh, and importantly stay relevant learn anticipate you know understand what the context that you're in and and hopefully um you'll be able to then deliver a, a work product or be able to deliver to your clients your your seniors your coworkers etc something that they appreciate um and it's 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 very efficient and i think very useful um everyone has their own kind of conception of what being relevant and staying relevant is this was just my conception i i i hope that you find that um useful i'm i'm happy to answer any questions that you may have on this or other issues feel free to write to me if you have any questions um thank you once again harold for for the invitation and the bimc biamc for this uh, wonderful initiative um i i follow your advice i must say uh, quite frequently i've seen all of the the prior episodes i look very much look forward to to the next one um thank you to all of you for for listening to me and um do stay safe in these difficult times thank you very much bye bye